Let's take a look at some information in charts on Cardano for Brave New Coin. I pissed off the link people yesterday. Let's piss off the Cardano people today. The usual song and dance here on the Cardano website. It slices, it dices, it does everything better than everybody else. It is a environmentally sustainable blockchain. Lots of PR, lots of hype, not a lot of substance. Not enough juice in the squeeze for me to really see this one. Having a shot long term really looks like an empty cathedral at the moment. Giant incubator. Okay, we got that out of the way. So here's the roadmap. And I'll let you, uh, the uh, the viewer, read into all this stuff. Uh, very convoluted, but very detailed, unlike many other chains. They're doing concurrent, divergent dev work. You know, there's tons of commits. I get lots of comments about the commits <laughs> all the time. They're the most, uh, the most developed blockchain on the planet. You know, whatever. But however you want to think about that. There are people working on the chain doing stuff and things so far i don't really see the material good that it has provided as a service not that any crypto really has done so so far but really ada recently has been all about the staking component this is adapools.org according to them looks like 70 percent of the chain is being staked and unless there's other stuff to do besides staking you really got to hope this keeps people at the table. Otherwise, they're going to sour on price depreciation rather quickly. A lot of fair weather fans who are here for things like uh, yield and are not necessarily Cardano fanboys. This goes for any coin. Another thing to pay attention to is if the yields for staking are lower than DeFi yields elsewhere, you know, people are going to go where the incentives are. So if we look at According to staking rewards, the adjusted reward, that's the reward minus inflation, is less than 2%, which is lower than I'm getting for USDC on Aave right now. So you really got to believe in the long-term play of Cardano. And I've tried looking up DeFi things, you know, anything, literally anything. Everybody's talking about NFTs, environmentally, this, this, that, and the other, but not really seeing a lot of activity other than PR, fluff, hype. Uh, here's new wallets. I'll look at on-chain metrics in a second, but you don't want to see activity fall off a cliff like this as people are souring on lack of price appreciation. If number doesn't go up continuously, this is going to lose a lot of people when there isn't anything else to do with a coin like Cardano, you know, or most tokens, let's be honest. Here's daily active staking wallets also down pretty considerably from the highs around mid-May when uh, there were liquidation spikes basically across the board on everything. Cardano has held up better than a lot of things, but the on-chain metrics look tragic. Here's transaction counts down from 65,000 to 26,000. That's over a 50% decline from highs. So this is a mixture of less speculation, less staking, less hype, less optimism from people. They switched over to uh, proof of stake, I think at the end of 2020 or begun to. That's the other thing. With proof of stake, you got to realize how decentralized is the network? Is it mainly held by exchange staking wallets? Is it pools that are all over the world? Uh, ADAPools.com or .org will help show that. Lots of variety here in the pools. So like Tezos, they're probably pretty well decentralized from that regard. I'm not really concerned. Unlike EOS, EOS is probably a bigger centralization risk when it comes to Proof of stake coins. But that's always one one thing to pay attention to as well. How many of these run full nodes? What are the size of the full nodes? That information I don't have available. Couldn't find that either. So if you know information about that, let me know in the comments. Uh, but all the, the metrics, the on-chain metrics are down, right? <laughs> Transaction counts down. Active addresses down considerably from 142,000 to 57,000. That's over a 50% decline. NVT is rising. These are not bullish things. You know, I don't want to be bearish on everything on the planet right now, but um, I'm just looking at the data, right? This is the only DeFi thing. This is the worst font on anything I've ever seen in my life. I don't know who made this decision, fire them immediately. Um, it's funny that this is their DeFi play, or at least the only thing I could find. But in order to buy it, you have to go to Uniswap, <laughs> which is on uh, Ethereum. That's just funny. So, you know what, they may get there eventually, but it's still early for Cardano. This is um, 
Google Trends, which share all of the sentiment metrics down considerably from all time highs, right? So this is going to take some time to normalize everything. And really price is probably more bullish than it should be considering the metrics are down by over 50, 60%. This is the half year MA multiplier. I wanted to show this because it's one of the most ridiculous ones I've ever seen. Um, the green here is the 183 MA. Below that is a buy zone. In the red is generally a sell zone if there's backtesting to support it reaching that area, which it hasn't in Cardano's case ever. This white line is the halfway line. So maybe 2.5x multiplier over a 5x multiplier would probably make more sense. But both of those points got hit um, over the past seven months, six months. So not a lot of historical evidence that this can uh, reach its multiplier. But the buy zones have been pretty much on the money. You know, it's taken months for these to like get out of the buy zone. But if you're looking at for some subjective thing, currently that's all the way down below 2,600 sats. I think it's only in this cycle that people started looking at Cardano on a USD basis. Most of the time, people have been watching it on uh, the BTC pair. This is Bittrex back to 2017. But as retail onboards and looks at this from a USD basis, there's a strong integer bias relative to everything else because it's, you know, it's under 10, it's under five bucks, it's under two bucks, whatever it is, it was 50 cents, it was 10 cents. That's just going to naturally attract a lot of people who don't realize that it's a trap <laughs> with um, a penny stop, penny stock type of mentality. Throughout all of 2019, there was a massive, I guess you could call it white coffee and accumulation type of profile. Kind of messy, but it's there. Tons of volume down there. And I think ultimately nothing will be spared. Not link, not ETH, not BTC. Everything wants to retrace to its January open for Cardano's case, that's around 15 cents. Um, cloud had been bullish, right? This entire time. This is really the first time on the daily cloud that it's been below the cloud. So really it's held up better than ETH, better than BTC, better than most of anything. Um, but based on these metrics that I showed, uh, it's hard to be bullish. You can't really be bullish on technicals again until it's back above 170, which is the current cloud level. But I like support at 85 and then it's just a cliff as far as uh, monthly pivots and vpvr are concerned and this may take 6 to 12 months to play out if everything doesn't dump together but what you want to see in that process is a bottoming of rsi as well which we haven't even hit oversold yet so it's getting there it's early um you can't it's hard to be bullish on any particular single thing when the entire ecosystem is kind of collapsing price wise let's say the metrics look better than they did this stuff correlates pretty highly in a bear market in general. Here's the uh, 5200 cross on the daily. Still above the 200, unlike ETH, unlike BTC, right? It, it looks better in technical, certainly. Um, it's bounced previously in late 2020 on the 200. So it's still got some time to make a turnaround here. But along with everything else, it needs needs a bit of a cooling period. This has gone from a, a bull cross of $0.04 cents to over 230 in a year. I mean, that's a good run for anything, right? Here's ADA BDC again on the uh, 5200 cross VPVR and RSI. RSI still not oversold yet. The 200 day moving average way down here at 2,500 sats. Not a lot of VPVR support until 2,300 sats. Uh, but you can see these notches here and the volume and the support that should be there on the way down. Should this thing uh, collapse in a spe spectacular fashion? But ultimately, I'll probably retrace to 21 or thereabouts and sort of make a decision from there. And when you're looking for bottomy stuff, you want to see this triple bottom bull div. You want to see this massive multi-year inverted head and shoulders. Here's another inverted head and shoulders here. Here's more white coffee and accumulation here. There's tons of stuff to look for. Right now, it doesn't look like any of that. If anything, you could argue inverted Adam and Eve, which is a bearish uh, reversal. So no bullishness here, any, any way you slice it. And on the weekly, it just looks like, you know, it wants to live down here. This honestly isn't just my, my bearishness on the protocol. This is just what the technicals look like, right? Here's ADA ETH on the weekly. And again, it wants to live kind of down here historically. Tons of uh, ranging in this area at uh, 36K, whatever it's called in ETH. That's basically a 50% decline from here. 
even on volume. So if you're going to be an ETH killer, you best not miss when you're taking swipes at the king. And there isn't enough stuff on Cardano just yet, right? So far, it's just a pipeline and a dream and a ton of hopium and a lot of papers and tweets and podcasts from Charles Hoskinson saying that uh, everything else is terrible and I'm the best, that type of stuff, right? Here's ADAETH on the daily, and it honestly looks okay trend-wise, but again, I'm not super confident in anything in altcoin land until I'm seeing multi-month bullish divergences. This was an inverted head and shoulders. This was a bullish Kuma breakout. This was a break above the 200-day moving average. So it's just a tough buy for me, even though the trend looks okay. I really want to see multi-month consolidation against a major coin before entering something in, in size. So look, Cardano's not going anywhere. Trend metrics are horrible. On-chain metrics are horrible. <laughs> um, they need to build more stuff so that there's things to do with the coin other than buy and hold, other than staking. If any of the proof-of-stake networks have taught us in the past, it's that uh, that's just not good enough for people to hold through a multi-month, let alone multi-year bear market, unless they are true, true believers. Just look at the Dash people. Some of them still exist. Dash maxis. Uh, lastly, I'll just mention the ETH BTC fund and the DeFi portfolio that I trade for Techme Capital on Enzyme.Finance Non-Custodial Portfolio Management Tool. Cardano is not part of this, uh, but you can participate or watch me trade this stuff, uh, AUM, allocation, all the trades are done through DEXs, and maybe one day this stuff goes multi-chain with DEXs that are robust on uh, Waves and Cardano and everything. You know, that's the dream. As a trader, I don't care where my trades get routed through. I just want the cheapest trades with the lowest slippage. Here's the DeFi portfolio. And both of these are just in Aave USDC at the moment. Tried to buy the dips, tried to trade the ranges. It uh, didn't mean revert, didn't break up. I mean, the DeFi charts look tragically awful at the moment. That's all for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.